All right, so now that you know how to work with content to lay out a scene, let's have a look at one of the most important aspects of 3D digital art, lighting. Lighting in Unreal is an art form in and of itself, and there are some powerful tools available to us. In the full course, we'll be going over an entire module's worth of content on lighting. There's just so much to cover when it comes to cinematic lighting. But in this video, I wanna get you quick started with a high level overview so that you can get in and start adding lights to your scene. So let's have a look at the five types of lights in Unreal Engine. The first light that we're gonna look at is the directional light. Now, the directional light can most easily be thought of as the sunlight of a scene. If we create a new basic level, we're presented with a starter scene that already has a directional light in it. If we rotate our camera around, we should be able to actually find the sun in the sky. Over here in the outliner, under the lighting folder, we can find the directional light. Also note that the sky sphere is an actor that renders our blue sky. The volumetric clouds render the clouds, and this sky atmosphere is a special actor that ties it all together. We'll go over all of that in great detail later on in the full course. For now, let's just laser focus on this directional light. If we select the directional light and rotate it, we'll see the lighting in the level change in a time of day fashion. We can even see that the sun is now lower in the sky. If we take it a step further, we can actually capture a morning golden hour and even a step further than that to capture a sunrise or a sunset. Any further and the map goes black as it translates over into nighttime which has some special case considerations that we'll dive into later. Bringing the sun back up, let's take a look at the details panel. Under the light category, let's have a look at this intensity parameter. You'll see a value of six lux. Now, lux is a measurement of illuminance per unit area. And if you're familiar with the lux measurement, then this can make Unreal's lighting a little confusing for you. In the real world, the sun has a lux value ranging from less than 40 all the way up to 120,000 in direct sunlight. And this depends on many factors such as time of day or the amount of clouds in the sky. Pair that with the fact that the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth and the earth's atmosphere diffuses some of that solar radiation. Unreal's internal gears are fudging some calculations and doing some magic behind the scenes. Keeping that in mind, you should pretty much ignore the lux aspect of the value here and just get comfortable with being creative with the art direction. The default value in a new basic map is 6. Many of us in the game and film industries have found 20 to be a solid average value for this. The important thing here when you're getting started is to just not overthink it too much. Now, next, let's have a look at the skylight. The skylight is a unique light that serves a very specific purpose. If you're familiar with HDRI lighting or you're a 3D artist familiar with software that provides default lighting environments such as Substance Painter or Marmoset Toolbag, this is what the skylight does in Unreal. It essentially acts as the HDRI lighting environment. By default, how this works is by capturing what it sees in the sky, including the sun, the clouds, and the color of the sky itself, to create a high dynamic range image to cast light out into the level. This is really great for outdoor environments. But you can also plug an actual HDRI image into the skylight to use that instead. To demonstrate that, let's create a new level, but this time we're going to select empty level. This is going to be a black viewport with nothing in it. So let's go ahead and drop a chair in from the starter content. Then let's go up to our quick add button, down to lights, and then drop a skylight in. Notice how the chair is completely black. That's because there is no sky, sun, or clouds for the skylight to capture in order to create that HDRI environment. So instead of trying to capture what's not there, let's just define our own HDRI image. To do this, go over to the details panel with the skylight selected, and we're going to change the source type from captured scene to specified cube map. The starter content provides us with an example HDRI cube map to use, so we'll click on the drop down and then we'll select it. Notice how suddenly our chair is lit. 
Double click on the thumbnail to see the image that is actually being translated to these light values. The brighter parts of the image are brighter parts of the light, just like the darker parts of the image are darker parts of the light. And this equates to a giant light with varying values surrounding the level in a 360 degree sphere. Take note that we can adjust this source map cube angle to rotate the image around, which gives us some different lighting. The intensity scale will adjust how much of that light is actually being contributed. With a default value of one, you're gonna be working with some really small numbers here. And then light color will adjust the tint of the HDRI image that's produced. And of course, all lights have an effects world checkbox that lets you toggle them on and off. All right, next, let's start diving into artificial lights. First on that list is going to be the point light. To start, I'm going to grab this floor from the starter content architecture folder and then scale it up to get a bigger area to work with. Then I'll use the quick add to drag out a point light. Now a point light is an omnidirectional light that radiates light outwards in a 360 degree sphere. Think of this like a light bulb, which should be easy to do based on the icon that it uses. Now the size of the sphere of influence is controlled by the attenuation radius. This value tells the light how far it can travel, but not how far it will travel. That's actually controlled by the intensity of the light, through a science called inverse squared dynamics. We'll cover that in depth in the lighting module of the full course, but for now, just think of the attenuation radius as an option that you can use to clamp how far the light can actually travel. With a larger attenuation radius, notice that as I change the intensity, it also affects the distance that the light travels. You'll also see that the value of intensity on the point light has a CD at the end. This stands for candelas and is the unit of measurement that Unreal uses for artificial lights. This is a more true to life measurement for you to use. Now eight candelas is equal to roughly 100 lumens if you're more familiar with that unit. Alternatively, you can type intensity into the details panel search box and change the intensity units to lumen if you're more comfortable actually using them. Light color does exactly what you would expect it to unless you change the color of the light. You can get as wild as you want here, but for more realistic lights, you can actually check the use color temperature option and then use the color temperature values to get warmer or cooler lights. These are pretty accurate to real world values. The next light that we're gonna look at is the spotlight. Now, if you work in film or photography, this one is gonna feel real familiar to you. We can grab this from the quick add menu as well. And just like the point light, intensity, color, and temperature all work the same. The attenuation radius also works the same, but because the light is not omnidirectional, it's actually represented by the length of the cone. Now, the width of the cone is controlled by this outer cone angle. The inner cone angle gives you an additional cone inside of the larger one that focuses the light a little harsher. Learning to use both cones together to get good results is an art form that we'll cover in full detail in the full course's cinematic lighting module. Next, let's look at our final artificial light type, the rect light. Short for rectangle, the rect light is a planar light source that simulates light coming from a rectangular surface, such as a television screen, a computer monitor, or even a rectangular light fixture. Also found in the quick add menu, the intensity, color, and attenuation radius are just like the other lights. The key settings for a rect light are the size and the barn door. For the size, you use the source width and source height to shape the rectangle. These units are in centimeters, of course. And then you can create a barn door effect with the barn door settings. Adjusting the angle, we can start to box the light in. Then we can use the length to make the doors longer. Now, while we can make what looks like a really good softbox shape, the barn door settings are actually more useful for creating some hard shadows, almost like a light coming through a barn door. All right, now you're aware of what lights are available to use inside of Unreal Engine. Like I mentioned, cinematic lighting is an art form in and of itself, which is 
I will be spending a lot of time covering it in the full course, with an entire module of videos dedicated to just that subject by itself. Can't wait to see you there.